This is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com, and in this video, I'm going to be going over coarctation of the aorta. And this video is part of an NCLEX review series over pediatric nursing. And as always, after you watch this YouTube video, you can access the free quiz that will test you on this condition. So let's get started. What is this condition? It is a congenital heart defect where there is narrowing present in a section of the aorta. And your aorta should never have any narrow areas. It should be nice and open because it allows blood to flow throughout the body. Because what's the role of our aorta? Well, number one, it's the largest artery in the body. And it comes off of the left side of the heart, specifically the left ventricle. And the left side of the heart's goal is to take blood it just received from the lungs that's become nice and oxygenated and pump it all throughout the body. And your aorta is that big structure that plays that role. It delivers that fresh oxygenated blood to the body. And it does this by branching off into all these various arteries, which is why we have problems with an aorta that is narrow. So depending on where the aorta is actually narrow, the areas before the narrowing are going to be affected. They're going to have experienced a higher pressure and the areas after the narrowing are going to experience a decreased pressure. And I want you to remember that because that's going to help you for your exams in knowing and being able to point out those telltale signs and symptoms of this condition. So real fast, let's go over the various sections of the aorta and what areas of the body it actually feeds. Okay, the first area we're gonna talk about is the ascending aorta. And just like the name says, ascending up, it's the part of the aorta that's going up. And the ascending aorta, what it does is it comes off and it branches off and becomes like the coronary arteries. And we know the coronary arteries set on top of the heart muscle and it delivers fresh oxygenated blood to the heart muscle. And if blood supply becomes decreased or blocked, what happens? That heart muscle will die. So that's the role of the ascending aorta. Then we have the aortic arch. And just like the word arch says, it's this part of the aorta that forms a little arch. And it goes up and it branches off to feed the head, hence your brain, your neck, and your upper extremities. Then we have the descending aorta, and this is where the part of the aorta after the aortic arch starts to go down, and it feeds the chest structures and the ribs. Then we have the abdominal aorta, and this is found a little bit below the diaphragm, and it goes down, and it supplies your abdominal and pelvic cavity organs and your lower extremities. Now let's talk about some quick facts about coarctation of the aorta. Okay, we just learned that this condition is occurring because there is narrowing within this aorta. And due to this narrowing, we're gonna have blood pressure changes proximal and distally from that actual narrowing in the body, which here in a moment, when I go over the patho, you're gonna see why. Okay, but where does this narrowing tend to occur in this actual aorta? It tends to happen after the left subclavian artery, which is this artery right here, so it's gonna occur a little bit after it, and before the ductus arteriosus. Now let's talk about the ductus arteriosus. What is that structure? Well, this structure, I have it illustrated here, is present in a fetus who is still in the womb. And what it does is it acts as a bypass because in the womb, the baby's lungs are not working yet. Once it starts breathing on its own, the lungs will start working and that's after birth. But because of that, the right side of the heart, it's not advantageous for it to, sh to take blood and get it to the lungs because the lungs aren't working. So in the heart, there's some bypasses and the ductus arteriosus is one of those bypasses. And it allows blood that comes in on that right side of the heart and that fetus to go and travel over to the aorta. So it creates this connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So blood that comes in the right side is gonna go over there to the aorta. But after birth, the baby's gonna start using its lungs and that right side of the heart needs to start working. So what happens is that this structure shrinks off and it goes away. And this will allow blood to start going to the lungs and doing its thing. So that's what that structure is. Now keep that in mind because I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more with the causes. 
Okay, so there's different types of coarctation of the aorta. One type is called preductal infantile type, and this is where the narrowing is occurring between the left subclavian artery and the ductus arteriosus, which is that structure, again, that should shrivel up after birth. So our narrowing is occurring there. Then you have the postductal type. This is the adult type, and it's hence most common in adults. And this is where you have narrowing after that ductus arteriosus. Now, according to the CDC.gov, 1,600 babies born in the U.S every year will have this condition. Now, how is it diagnosed? Many times it can be diagnosed during the fetal ultrasound. Whenever mom is having her prenatal visits, they're doing an ultrasound of the baby. They can look at that heart and sometimes they can see where that narrowing is occurring. Or it can be diagnosed with an echocardiogram. If baby's born, starts having those telltale signs and symptoms of this condition. They can easily do an ultrasound of the heart and look at the aorta and see if there is narrowing. Now, what is this caused by? Well, they think it's caused by what's happening is that this tissue that is making up that ductus arteriosus has extended into the aorta. So whenever that structure naturally goes to close after birth, because that tissue has also extended and embedded itself in the aorta, when it goes to close, it's gonna take some of that aorta with it and cause it to become narrowed. Now let's talk about the pathophysiology of this condition. Okay, in our previous videos, when we were talking about other congenital heart defects, a lot of those problems were due to pumping problems, like blood was being shunted from left to right, right to left, there were holes in the septums that were leading to that, or the great vessels were like flipped, coming out of places they shouldn't have. But in this condition, it's a little bit different because the pumping mechanism of the heart is really fine. We don't have any holes within these atrium, ventricles, vessels aren't switched or anything like that. Really the main problem is coming from this narrow aorta and it's causing pressure changes. So that's the big thing I want you to take away from the patho. So let's talk about that. Okay. As I pointed out before, when you have narrowing, now this narrowing can depend, like it varies in severity among patients. Some patients have extreme narrowing, why some, it's just a little bit and they have to monitor it. And it can be in different locations. So we're talking about the most common and the severe cases. So as I pointed out before, whenever you have the narrowing, before the narrowing, so proximal before the narrowing, the arteries, the sections of the aorta, those arteries that they're supplying are going to experience a really high blood pressure, okay? Now, the areas that are after the narrowing, the sections of the aorta that are feeding the other parts of the body, the distal after the narrowing is going to experience low blood pressure. So here you have this like, in a sense, pinched off area that's really small, all the blood that's normally gonna be shot from this left ventricle up through this aorta, it can't get into this little area. So it can't allow blood to flow down, which is gonna decrease blood pressure to all those important organs and extremities, but it's gonna leave like a concentration of pressure that's gonna build up here in this proximal area that's gonna be shot to those areas. Now, this is going to affect structures. Now let's talk about what structures it's going to affect and the signs and symptoms. And if you can get that, there's no memory aid like mnemonic we need to memorize that because it all makes sense. Okay, so the areas that are gonna be affected with high blood pressure generally are going to be your left ventricle, one of those structures. Now, why is that? Okay, you have this area that's narrowed in the aorta. All this pressure is building this way. Oh, there's that left ventricle. It's having to pump against all that pressure that just has built up in there. So over time, this left ventricle is going to enlarge. It's gonna be exhausted and it's going to quit working eventually which is going to lead to backflowing of blood and we call that heart failure so you'll have backflowing of blood decreased cardiac output your left ventricle just can't pump the way it used to because of that extra pressure that has built up so they'll be to prevent that a lot of times they're started on medications to help with that now also other structures that are going to be affected from this way up remember those arteries that we were talking about like um, the arteries from the aortic arch, for instance, they feed the head, the neck, the upper extremities. Well, they're gonna have all this high pressure going to them and that's not good. So what kind of signs and symptoms can that lead to? 
Well, we have all this high blood pressure going to our brain. That's gonna cause headaches. Infants can't tell you I have a headache, so they're just gonna be irritable and act like they're in pain all the time from the increased blood flow. It can cause nosebleeds from where all that pressure is pounding up against those capillaries in the nose, so random nosebleeds that little babies, children shouldn't be having. Also, it can cause stroke. And it's the same concept like with adults. We wanna get their hypertension managed. And if we don't, it can, all that extra pressure hitting those arteries constantly can cause a stroke and decrease brain fun function over time. Other things I want you to remember, big things that exams love to ask about those pulses. Okay, if you have high blood pressure going to the arteries that feed your upper extremities, how do you expect those pulses to feel. They're gonna be very strong in those upper extremities called bounding. And when you take blood pressures in those upper extremities, it's gonna be really high, like hypertension compared to our lower extremities. And that goes for the pulses in the lower extremities as well. And um, it can be about a 20 millimeter of mercury difference compared to the upper and lower. Now let's switch and let's talk about the low blood pressure. Again, this are the areas after that narrowing, so distal to the narrowing, and it's going to affect our lower body. So you have all this pressure concentrated up here before the narrowing, then after the narrowing, it's just diminished greatly. So you just have a little bit of blood flow trickling in, low blood pressure. So lower body, how's that really gonna present? Well, whenever you go to feel those pulses because you don't have high pressure, you're gonna have absent or severely diminished femoral pulses. So that's why after birth, you always wanna check that newborn's pulses in that femoral area. How does that feel? Also, those extremities can feel cool to the touch in the lower extremities. And the blood pressure, of course, is going to be lower in those lower extremities compared to that upper. So that's the big takeaway I want you to remember are the differences between the pulses that you're gonna feel and the blood pressure that you're going to feel compared to the upper and lower extremities. In addition, let's talk about heart murmurs. Almost all these congenital heart defects cause some type of heart murmur. You're gonna have like a systolic heart murmur. Where is that going to be heard? It's mainly gonna be heard where your aorta is, and um, generally where you can hear it best will be on the back in the intrascapular area on the left is where that can be noted. Also, a little bit later on, patients can develop what's called rib notching. Now, what in the world is that? Well, it's whenever they take a chest x-ray, it's just like the name says, whenever they look at the ribs and the chest x-ray, instead of being nice and smooth, they'll literally look like they're like notched out. And what this is, is it's from where the body has created what's called collateral circulation. And your body is really smart. It senses, hey, we have some narrowing here and we need more blood flow after that narrowing because, you know, those tissues and organs aren't going to make it. So they create extra vessels to go around that area, which is going to go onto the ribs to deliver that blood flow. So that's why you see the notching of the ribs. Now let's talk about nursing interventions and treatments for this condition. Okay, we know that we have a narrowed section of the aorta and that can cause a lot of problems. It can cause heart failure, it can cause changes in the pulses throughout the body. And as a nurse, what are we gonna be looking at? What's our role? Well, number one, we are going to be monitoring for heart failure. And over time, this can cause this Again, it really depends on the severity of this condition. Some newborns, once they're born and those bypasses start closing, they can suddenly develop this from where the aorta is so stenosis, it's causing so much pressure on that left ventricle. So nursing diagnosis realm, we can be thinking at risk for decreased cardiac output because over time when that left ventricle fails, our cardiac output, amount of blood or heart is able to pump is not going to be very good. Also, we're, we can be thinking about respiratory issues, oxygenation, impaired gas exchange, because as the left ventricle fails, blood will back up and go into the lungs. You could hear crackles, they can have difficulty breathing, which can lead to poor feeding, and their growth can be affected as well. And risk for fluid volume overload as that heart continues to fail. So as a nurse, we really wanna focus on checking blood pressures in those upper and lower extremities, checking and feeling those pulses. And again, 
Where are we gonna have high, bounding, strong pulses? Upper or lower extremities? Upper extremities. Where are we gonna have a higher blood pressure in the upper extremities compared to the lower extremities? And remember, you can even have just completely absent or severely diminished femoral pulses. And that goes back to the narrowing and how it's affecting the areas before the narrowing and after the narrowing, because like no blood is going through after the narrowing. Okay, in mild cases of narrowing, in some children it may go undetected until childhood. And the nurse, doctor may notice, hey, you have really strong pulses up here, but those femoral pulses and those lower extremity pulses, not very strong, and they take their blood pressure. There's a huge difference. They have hypertension up here, but not down there. Also, they have that heart murmur on that back, the left area next to the shoulder blades where you can hear the aorta, and that can tip them off to that, get an echocardiogram, look at how bad the narrowing is and proceed from there. So there are some cases where it's very mild and it has to be watched. Now in severe cases, let's say baby's born has a completely severe case of this, typically what happens is that they may be started on a prostaglandin infusion. And we've talked a lot about this in our other congenital heart defect video, so you may remember this, but what does this do? It helps keep open that bypass, specifically that ductus arteriosus. Now, why would we wanna do that in this condition? Well, it does a couple things. Number one, it's going to help decrease that workload on that left ventricle because now we have a connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta that can alleviate some pressure on that left ventricle, help hence prevent heart failure. In addition, it's gonna help increase blood flow to those lower extremities which very badly need that extra blood flow. So that can help with that. Then in the meantime, they're gonna be prep for surgery, they may be started on some medications to help preserve that heart function already, like digoxin, what does that medication do again? It helps slow down um, the heart rate, but it makes the contractions stronger, so the heart pumps more efficiently, but at a slower rate. Also, they can be started on diuretics. A lot of times, they will be on mechanical ventilation prior to surgery. And what kind of surgery do they do? There's various techniques that surgeons may use, but typically the most common is they go in, they cut out that narrowing, and then reconnect the two pieces of the aorta where they were where it was removed. And another thing that we do as a nurse, which is really important, is educating our patients and educating, well, the parent of the patients usually about number one, long-term follow-up with a cardiologist. Many of these patients have this repaired, but there's some things that you have to watch out for that they have to be monitored for. Number one, after surgery, this aorta has to be closely monitored because restenosis can occur where it actually narrows again. A lot of times whenever this happens, they can go in and do a balloon angioplasty where um, this is done during like a heart cath, going through a great vessel, put a balloon in that part of the aorta and open it back up. So they have to monitor the, them for that. And in addition, some patients, blood pressure doesn't ever go down and they have long-term hypertension. So usually afterwards, the pressure will, their blood pressure, because you know they're having high pressure in the upper extremities, will start to decrease, but some patients will have long-term hypertension and they'll need medications to manage that. So all that follow-up and just continuing monitoring of the patient as a nurse, you'll want to tell the patient about that. Okay, so that wraps up this review over coarctation of the aorta. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.